everybody. It is Gypsy and Persephone, and it is tea time with the Gypsy Witch. So grab your mugs, your cups, your iced tea. I'm having my um, sun tea that I brewed out in the sun on Litha. So it's nice and um, blessed. <laughs> Charged with a lot of energy. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about... Um, not just really what heaven is like, but based on your beliefs during your lifetime, like uh, maybe what it'd be like for a Christian. My family's most most members of my family are Christian, uh, so those have crossed over that. Uh, an atheist like my son John was, uh, or any other religion. I don't know, say um, Buddhist, uh, whatever, whatever religion you are. What happens after you cross over? What is heaven like for you? And then maybe what is heaven like in general? So, do we want the atheist to start? <laughs> okay, he's the closest. <laughs> so we're going to do him. That'd be my son, John. Okay, honey, so go ahead. Okay, Mama, for someone like me, you know at the beginning of my life, I was raised in the church. And then we went to what I consider that woohoo crazy church. Mm -hmm. You think we should mention the denomination? <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure we should. Okay, it was. I, I'm just gonna say it was very conservative, more on the fanatical side. The last church I was in, and I took my boys. And my youngest, he said, "Mom, I'm gonna go to church at Dad's church. I'm going with Dad to church. I don't like this church." <laughs> but anyways, go ahead, honey. So anyways, Mom, that's true. My youngest brother, um, he chose to go to um, church with my stepfather. Right, and that was a United Methodist church. It was more what my mom considers down to earth these days. Yeah, it's more reasonable, <laughs> more loving, let's put it that way, less judgmental. <laughs> yeah, sorry, everybody. I had to go there. Anyways, go ahead. I'm sorry, honey. Okay, Mom, so what I experienced when I crossed over was not so much shock and dismay, believe it or not, but it was what um, I told you in the past. It was like, oh my God, my mom was right. Right. So I remembered all these things that you taught me via Christianity. Right. And like my view of heaven is not really all that different now that I'm a witch. Uh, that it was when I was a Christian. And what I mean by that is not the condemnation. There is no hell. God's not judging us. We judge ourselves, basically. Uh, the beauty, the freedom, the love, the happiness, no more pain. That's that what has not changed for me. So go ahead, honey. Right. So I remembered all of this about it being beautiful. And, um, you know, just a heavenly city and like what you taught me. When I was a youngster, and as you know, as a teenager, I had a very bad experience with this church, and I decided to become an atheist. So, when I, when I first left my body, yeah, on a permanent basis, I wasn't really all that aware of, of this heavenly city, because I immediately went to my mother. Yeah, I was very aware of that. <laughs> anyways, go ahead, honey. So, anyways, yeah, that's basically what happened. I came to your house, and I was with all of my family for a very long time. I'm going to say what I did was stay with you, and yes, my dad the most. I kept bebopping back and forth, checking on you both when you weren't together. Um, yes, and the rest of our family members, grandma, my aunts and uncles, my baby cousins, my baby brother, thing like, things like that. I, I'm sorry, he, he, he's the oldest in the family, so yeah. Anyways, that's what I did. Now, I did tell you one version of my story. What do you mean by version? Um, how I remembered it the first time, when I first crossed over, okay. That I wasn't really aware of my grandpa. I'm going to say grandpas. Oh, grandpas, 
your other grandpa was there too? Well, he was, even though I never knew him in this life. Right, his other grandpa, his paternal grandpa, he, he died when uh, John's daddy was like 12, I think, something like that. Right, so I never knew him, but he came. Now, all I can recall is being with you the most. And right, the entire family was at, at your house. Um, you know, be bopping back and forth and comforting you. Well, we were all comforting each other. Right. So, that's what I remembered. What I didn't realize was that Grandpa and my baby brother and sister, right, my middle children who I lost, a miscarriage is actually, we're going to talk about that one day, right, uh, were there waiting for me. Right. Now, I know you want to talk about that in another video, and that will be an interesting one. Um, but because I was, I didn't have the awareness of my brother and sister uh, that you, yeah, that you kept going after they chose not to come into this life. I wasn't really sure who they were. Yes, and you did talk to them with, to about about them to me, but I didn't have that awareness. I didn't. Was I fat? Why? Right, the person I had, right. Um, but I knew my grandpa. Right. So he was the one who got my attention. I was so immersed in my mother's pain, especially uh, my Aunt Lisa's, my grandmother, just right, everybody, but especially my mother's and father's, uh, that I wasn't really paying attention. That Grandpa was saying, hey, John, Johnny, over here. Right. He, he was kind of doing that. My, I, I, can, I can imagine, you know, with my dad, I, I can imagine that kind of attitude, like, you, come on. <laughs> yeah, right. So he finally did get my attention. And then... I realized who Tina and Ricky were. And again, he said, oh, look at that. Mama was right again. I love when that happens. I mark my calendar with the red pen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, he's coming. Right. So that is what happened. I got to know my brother and sister very well. Uh, we, hang, we hung out a lot together. Mm -hmm. I remember that. They, they used to drive me nuts, teasing Mama all the time after Johnny crossed over trying to cheer me up and then we had my youngest still here he's still in the physical realm isn't it wasn't that right? just so sweet of him i had four pregnancies that one just chooses to stay with mama he teases me all the time to cheer me up so yeah you guys were doing it too right anyways that's how i imagine not imagine that's how i remembered it okay now grandpa the matina ricky uh, Aunt Charlotte and everybody else has a different version, but that's what I remember. Now you, right, my what I, my memory is almost like his, where I, he, I remember him coming to my house. I didn't see him. I could feel him really strongly, and the police hadn't found him yet, and I'm sitting there going, I had his picture. I'm like, no, he's not there. I knew he was there. I mean, I almost could see him. I turned around. You're not there. You, no, no, you're coming home in your body. Don't, yeah, you're not there. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's kind of the same thing. Right. So then, after Grandpa got my attention, I was able to fully enjoy um, the spirit realm. Heaven, if you will. Right. There's many names, people, for the afterlife. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's right, Mom. We're going to talk about those label things one of these days, too. Right. That's a good thing to talk about, too. So, anyways, that's what happened with me. Now, what I experienced, so here comes the good part. <laughs> He all likes this part. Right. What I experienced after that, and I was more able to break away from you and the rest of the family, um, I was able to enjoy the afterlife. I was able to um, manifest whatever I wanted, right? And like who used to be your mentor back then, uh, the psychic medium who we spoke through at first, right? She explained to you, I had, well, basically, what Juan has over there, the side by side, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting my hands on that this afternoon, I'm going to go ride it, <laughs> right, right, I was doing that, right, and it was green and black, his is silver and black, it's so beautiful, Juan's, yeah, anyways, that's what I was doing, and I was doing it on sandy terrain, like you are on now, my mother's always on sandy terrain these days, <laughs> right, and, and that's what I do now. Like I mentioned one other time, I have manifested myself a computer lab. Yeah, he's one of the, he was one of those techie, uh, techie nerds here. So yeah, that, that I can see that. Right. So that's what happened with me. And with being an atheist, 
Well, honey, yeah, like, you expected nothing after your body shut down. So, what was that like to all of a sudden, oh, what am I doing back at Mama's house? I, I thought I was thousands of miles away. <laughs> Is that what you felt, what you thought? Well, Mama, what I thought as I looked around and, well, I saw you, well, crying your eyes out. Seven years later, it's still hard. I saw you crying your eyes out. And like I said, at first I thought I was dreaming. I thought I was stuck in a nightmare. Now, I would like to say I did commit suicide. Right, my, now my mother just told me I do not want to address the suicide issue. Um, but you commit suicide, yes. There is a happen that suicide um, victims go to. Right. Not that it's separate. There is no hell for suicide victims, okay? Right. We're going to have a discussion about hell one of these days, too, right? So anyways, Mom, I thought I was having a bad dream, and I did not succeed in killing myself. Mm -hmm. I remember you t explaining that to me. That broke my heart. Right, it did. But it only lasted, yeah, maybe basically at 72 hours, and it was when you and my baby brother and Aunt Lisa were at the funeral home making those plans, and your grief became so intense that that's when Grandpa and Tina and Ricky were able to get my attention. Uh, well, honey, I, I think, you know, handing over your picture to do the obituary and stuff like that, it just made it so real for me, and the pain just, right, and I watched my 15-year-old brother, oh, he just turned to was he 16 or 15? No, he was 15, right? No, he was 16, right? All that, like Mama said, he, he just turned into a man all of a sudden, and I sat there and I watched him taking care of our mother. And I couldn't believe it. Right, he still has a little bit of it in him, but he takes care of Mom all the time. Right. So, Grandpa said, look, John, that is truly your mother and your brother and your aunt sitting there. That pain you feel coming from your mother is very real. So it was kind of like one of those false reality things almost like they talk about. Kind of. And that's another thing we need to talk about. Oh, that's going to go on the list thing now. Right. So that's what happened. He said, that is truly your mother. You're not dreaming. You're on the other side now. And it's real. And you are here with me. It is your grandpa. Okay. So that's where I'm going to leave it off. And then after that, after I had that realization, things got better. Not so much for my family. It took a long time. Yeah, it, it took a long time for us to heal here. I, I don't know what it's like for your dad. Uh, for, for me, I'm doing much better. But they, like when we talk about it like that, I get teary-eyed. I miss my son being here physically. Right. Uh, so that's where it was for me, based on my beliefs. All right. Most of the rest of the family is Catholic, right? Oh, great grandma could talk about that. Ooh. Okay, well, let's get the Christian Catholic pers perspective first. Um, anybody who wants to go? Dad does. Okay. Okay, so this is Michelle's dad. I was raised Catholic. My mother was Catholic. Grandpa was what Protestant, wasn't he? Right. Ooh, I lost my eggs. <laughs> right. So, my dad, he was more Protestant, but like most men did back in those days, went more for, um... Dad, could you... Yeah. He's telling me, hold me in. <laughs> That's how my dad always tells me, hold me in. <laughs> okay, you hold still. <laughs> So, right. So, he became most, he, he, he became Catholic, right? And we went to that pretty church there. I remember that church when I was a kid. When, oh, when, grand, when they had the funerals, too. Right. So, I was raised Catholic. And my belief was basically what most Catholics are. Catholics don't, um,
Catholics don't believe so much in the judgment thing, or they don't focus on it so much. They believe in it, they don't focus on it. It's more the happier times of, right, your lives in crossing over. Right. I'm having trouble. I haven't been Catholic since this is Michelle. I, I, just, I'm having so much trouble. Remember what it's like to be Christian or Catholic. I can't remember. Right. Now, Protestants, especially back in my, my father's day, was more um, hellfire brimstone, right? Grandpa says thank you for saying it his way. Hellfire brimstone, yeah. <laughs> so, right. So that's how that went with me. My dad is saying right. Now, when I crossed over, I got what I expected, right? Um, yeah, if you want. So, anyways, my daughter said to me. Dad, you already have four grandchildren waiting for you up there. Yeah. Right. I was mostly talking about my two uh, miscarriages. I knew they were around. I knew they'd be there. Yeah. So I told my dad about that. Right. So even though she was, I was in the, I was in the Methodist Church at the time. Right. Even though she was Protestant, which was basically uh, what my dad's side of the family was. <laughs> yeah, John's interpreting, trying to talk with Grandpa's ex. Um, I met my grandchildren. Right. Six? Uh, no, four. Okay. Yeah, I thought he said six. Right. Four grandchildren. My oldest two daughters in two miscarriages. My youngest had uh, two miscarriages. So there were four grandchildren waiting there for me. So that's what I was met up with. Right. And of course, your brother, grandma, grandpa, everybody was there. Right. The whole family was there. So I got what I expected, my father saying. So afterwards, it wasn't so much like a silver city or a golden city. I was her gold. Right. It was more whatever I thought. I was able to, what my daughter now calls manifest. I never called it that before. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but now I've learned that term. It was just, I thought it, and it would happen. That's what heaven is like for me mostly. Yeah, it helps if I hear your voice, too. Right. So that's when I realized my daughter was right about the manifesting shit. Right, everybody, and you can manifest here in the physical realm. It just takes a hell of a lot longer. Yeah, like that's pea soup. It's just very thick. <laughs> Slow and heavy. Dead soup is delicious, though. Sat on the counter for days on end in the crock pot till Mama started complaining. <laughs> when you getting that off my counter? <laughs> right, so that's what, what I'm getting mostly now. Is whatever I manifest, think about, I can do. Right, now, this trip your mother and I were going to take to Vegas after I retired. Yes, which never happened because I died when I was approximately my daughter's age. So we, I never did really get to retire. I do that. Now, now, Daddy, Mama's still here in the physical realm. Can you manifest Mama over there? Like, kind of like, it wouldn't really be her, though. He's saying, right, he doesn't, he doesn't. He has memories of her. And it's not really uh, like my version of Janice is there. It's more like... I'm pretending she is, but she isn't. Okay. My daddy, he yeah, he says some really strange things now that he's in the afterlife. Yeah, yeah, it's like it. I can't believe my daddy just said that. Right, you just think about what it would be like when she's here. Right. Now he, right, if she wants to, when she gets back home to heaven, we can do that. Manifest Vegas. Or we can actually go there. And we're just so close right now. <laughs> oh, wow. That's fun. I was just laughing because I know what my mom was probably going to want to do. <laughs> yeah, yes. She, after daddy died so young, yeah, he was 57. 57. I'm going to be 57 in a few months. Uh, my mom regretted that. I remember her talking to me about that so much. Yeah, yes. Waiting for retirement to do this 
big Vegas trip. They would go on a weekend once in a while, but they wanted to do a big Vegas trip. They never liked it too much. That's another thing, people. Don't wait for shit like that. Just do it, because you don't really remember your life plan, so you don't know if it's going to come to fruition or not. Anything else, Dad? Is it? I think that's about it. Okay. So that was a Catholic Christian point of view. I was thinking about great-grandma. My grandma wants to talk. Grandma Buha. <coughs> My grandma, though. Right. Okay. Yay. My, my beautiful grandma, Regina Becker Bugheit. <laughs> I need to feel you, grandma. <laughs> just laughing at my accent. It's not exactly the Appalachian one. I'm just being silly, right? Okay. What she experienced after she crossed over was yes. I saw my oldest grandchild looking out my kitchen window. Did you hear my thought? She said, yes, she did. I was standing right next to you. Did you know that? Yes and no. It was like I, I wasn't talking to spirits at that time, but I kind of knew you were there, but I wasn't really acknowledging it, if that makes sense. She got that impression, too. And you were in such deep thought, you were looking back towards the bar. I'm oh, sorry, I need to go. <laughs> okay, Grandma, go ahead. She heard your thought. This will be the last time I ever look back at the barn or be in Grandma's kitchen. Yeah, Grandma's kitchen was very important to me. <laughs> she never knew that. And that's one of the first things she remembers. Of course, she was there with the rest of her children and grandchildren. My dad died seven years before uh, my grandma did. So Kenny was there to meet me. Of course, Wesley James. Both Wesley James. That's my grandpa and my uncle. My uncle died at six months before Daddy was born. She says, you're right about that. Those are the kind of things I remember at the beginning. But then, after the funeral, I went uh, back and forth between heaven and the physical realm, visiting my family members and stuff. Making sure, yes, Aunt Gertie, Aunt Gertie was okay. And all my grandchildren. Kenny was the one who brought me home. He did? Right. Wow, Dad. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times, yeah, a lot of times you have um, somebody escort you home. You can have a whole bunch. Yeah, I plan on having everybody. We're going to have a party. We are. Grandma's making that spice cake and her coleslaw and the corn. <laughs> right. So that's what I did afterwards. Yeah, I kind of heard that sounds right. Grandpa wants to talk? Oh, Uncle West does? Are we sure? We, yeah. This could go where I go around. No, go on, Uncle West. <laughs> that was more like family, right? Come on, Uncle West. Oh, the accent. He doesn't really remember crossing over. Uh. Because, yeah, he was a small baby. Is it, he's like, is it, is he the younger you are? He wouldn't know. He doesn't remember other lifetimes, just this one. He, what he does remember is when his niece was born. The oldest, right? The most special one. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> the old lady of the family now. <laughs> yes. After Grandma died, right? So he hung around. Oh, he hung around with me. I remember that. Yeah. Not in a video. Right. So, yeah, for a child, I'm going to say, I have really no memory. I was six months old. I barely remember being here. I remember your grandma hovering over my crib. <coughs> okay. And I remember Grandpa, more or less. Right. He was, uh, he, uh, I, what I remember about Grandpappy, he was either uh, he, back in the barn and the farm, you know, working on the farm or at the coal mine. <laughs> he said it was the same thing for me, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, my dad, I, I, I see Grandpappy's point. Yeah. So that's what I, I, I really don't remember crossing over. It was just like I was back where I belonged. 
with really not much of a memory of being here. So yes, Michelle, the younger you are, that was your thing. Uh, the less memories you have of here, right, and more of upstairs. So it's like you're just back where you belong. Was there anything else? That room. Okay. All right. So great grandma's side of the family. The Dillons. They were Protestant. Right. What about back in Wales? Was our family Protestant? Right. Great grandma. The beautiful, gorgeous, Ethanua Buhai. <laughs> So what I remember, right, what was your belief system when you were here? Okay, to answer your question about Wells, the Welsh side of the family, we were basically the ones who brought in the psychic mediumship. We were not the Druidy here in the United States. Back in Wells, we had already started going over to Christendom. Right. But you're right, we had that Celtic. Druidry was far, very far back. Okay. This, this I'm not sure of because it's so far back, but we did uh, keep the psychic mediumship abilities. Okay. When we came to America and we got into a church similar to the last one you and Johnny and Christian were in, mm -hmm. we had to tone it down. Okay. But we not really, not just capped it up. It's been passed along down the line. <laughs> right. But it does run in our family. We did not necessarily tone it down because of witch hunts. It was more what that church would have said. And you're right. We, we were high up in membership running the church. So we had to be very careful. Like, I had to be careful about the last church. I think that's why my pastor didn't really like me. I think he kind of knew who I was. I knew who he was. And <laughs> He's just, it's sort of like that. Okay. So when I crossed over, I got what I expected. I knew about the afterlife the same way my great-granddaughter does. You get the information d directly from the horse's mouth. <laughs> right. From upstairs. Right. So I knew what to expect. I knew... Uh, people would be there to meet me. I knew they were allowed grandma her, great grandma her, eggs and right, to meet me. Um, and then I could manifest whatever I wanted. What I didn't realize was I could do it here. It just takes too damn long, great grandma down here. <laughs> she says she knows. Yeah, yeah. So I have a beautiful afterlife, as all of you would say, down here now. Yeah, why don't you just let mom talk naturally so this my great grandma sounds like herself. <laughs> right down here, right. And that's all I basically remember about crossing over. Right, I, you died before I was born. It was great grandma Evelyn. Died when I was little. Right. Now, I died a few years before this one, yet she mistakenly told somebody in the family. Excuse me a minute. My cat's strangling me. That she remembers me. Yeah, when you're a psychic medium, everybody. You have to be careful sometimes because you get the realms confused, right? right? So then, that's basically what happened. When you're a child, your psychic mediumship is so real. This girl really thought that she met great grandma here. It's true. My cousin thought I lost my mind. My uncle did. <laughs> I knew where she just didn't have a body. <laughs> a physical one. That's right, honey. Okay. So, right. It's basically like Kenny's, my grand, my grand, grandson. Mm -hmm. Manifesting what I want. I, I got the warm welcome. Oh, the love. Right. So, basically, Protestant, right, and Catholic is basically the same. Right. Now, we don't have anybody in our family Right. Now you say your version of heaven is basically the same. I just didn't know about the manifestation. I'm excited about that one. Right. Judgment, Mother. 
you kind of believed in it. I didn't dwell on it, right? So, since you didn't focus on it, that's not what you're going to get, right? Now, I want to say that uh, judgment and hell things, brimstone and hellfire. <laughs> I like saying hellfire because then, yeah, you get to talk like myself. Yeah, with this Damon thing in here, they have me talking all these different ways, and I just want my own Midwestern Appalachian accent back. <laughs> it's all. <laughs> so I like to say things like hellfire, because that's how I'd always say it. <laughs> yes, so that's what it is. Heaven, yes, is anything you want it to be. You cross over. That's which there aren't rules. Right, we have spiritual laws, people. Right. However, you get to do whatever you want. If you want that silver city on a hill, no thank you, honey. <laughs> I got to say hill. <laughs> you can have that. You just think of it and you manifest it. So heaven is whatever you want it to be. Right. So on the flip side, everybody, guess what video gypsy's doing next with their family? <laughs> Hellfire and brimstone. About this hell we're going to talk about. Right. Did we cover everything? Yeah, I mean, it's that simple. Right, it's that simple. And you can cross realms. You come visit your family in the physical realm. You even might have memories of other planets you've incarnated on. You could go visit there. No big whoop, people. You just go. Oh, yes, I I have. I know if any of you star seeds out there know about. What do we call our children? Um... Another planets, starseed children. I can't even remember. Yes, I have an ET soul. It's just not, well, I don't even know if that's really a thing. We're gonna talk about that one day. Yeah, because I think everybody is incarnated on other planets. But anyways, uh, here, uh, yes, I have a son on another planet. So I, after I leave here, I could just go bebop over there like that, and I could go see, visit him in person. Yes. So, anything else? No, that's about it, Mama. Yeah, we almost went off on another tangent. Might put that on the list of, of videos to do, right? So anyways, people, heaven's that simple. No big whoop. It's all happiness and joy and love. And you get to do whatever you want. Manifest like that. Whatever you want. And it's all good stuff. It's all love. It's all beautiful. So I got to wrap it up here because Miss Persephone, she's decided she wants to go back in the house and Mama ain't paying attention, so she's going to start yelling at me in a moment. So bless it be and make it a joyful one.